I am going to show you live how I do all of my ad analysis. So let's get into one of the ad examples that I pulled up for today. What I have right here is free campaigns. Now I'm gonna explain each one of them, what I include and what metrics I pay attention to. Let's start with the first campaign and this is going to be our, let's say, retargeting campaign. For every single campaign that I am running right here, the objective that I use is the sales objective or aka they also call it the conversions objective. Now the reason behind that is because for the majority of my clients, our main goal is to get sales. We're not looking for traffic, we're not looking you know, for video viewers. Our goal is to get as many sales as possible. And the conversion objective does that particular task for us. So when I go to this retargeting campaign, right, I have only one single ad set. And what I'm doing right here is I am going to target all of my website visitors and all of my social media engagers in the longest period of time. So if I go, let's say right here at edit and I scroll down to the audience section, you will see that I created a couple custom audiences. Now these are essentially what we call the retargeting audiences. So we have all website visitors in the last 180 days. We have all Instagram engagers uh, in the last 365 days and we have also people who've watched 95 percent of our uh, videos because what i found is that people who've watched 95 percent of your videos they are most likely going to be interested in your products otherwise they would not stay and watch so long of your videos they can be considered like as really really good potential customers in the future we keep all the other things like by default the age is going to be 18 you know all the way up to 65 plus we're not going to add any interest any detailed targeting and we also use the advantage plus targeting now i'm going to go to the next campaign and then i will explain also after that all the metrics that we have here because honestly like with all the metrics they kind of gonna be monitored the same in each campaign but for now just i just wanted to give you like an idea of what we have in the retargeting campaign so if we go back to our campaigns and we go to the second campaign which is our prospecting main scaling campaign then here again we're gonna have one single ad set now in this ad set, we're gonna use a broad open targeting. And this essentially means that we're gonna use only like the age, you know, the gender, and will not include any interests or any behaviors. The reason behind that is because we are looking for audiences that are the most scalable. And the scalable audiences are the ones who are the broadest ones. Choosing the broad audiences, aka open targeting with no interest, with no behaviors and all of that gives us the room to, you know, go after huge, huge audiences while we do not get our creatives fatigued very quickly. And in this particular ad set, I'm gonna just put only the creatives that are proven that we've tested in the testing campaign, which this is uh, the next campaign that I wanted to talk about. So if we go to the testing campaign, this is where all the meatiest thing is going to happen. This is where we're gonna have multiple ad sets and this is where we're gonna have multiple ad creatives and ad messages. As you can see, we've got here a couple of ad sets, as you can see, because we are testing continuously new creatives and new messages. And this is what I recommend for this particular campaign. You want to ensure that every single week, and I mean it, like every single week you go ahead and you publish new creatives based on all the learnings that you've got you know, in your ad account. With these ad sets, again, what I will have is I will go ahead, again, target pretty much of a broad open targeting. Right, we're gonna just put the location, the gender, the age, and we're not gonna include any of the detail targeting, any of the interests, and especially lookalikes, because I've seen that they are limiting us from scaling. And at the end of the day, for all the clients that we work with, 
uh, our main goal is just to skyrocket our sales and to break through it. And of course, for that, we need the largest audience, like I said. So with that being said, every single time when we have in mind to, let's say, publish two or three new ad creatives, we are gonna duplicate, you know, one of these ad sets and we are going to put those three creatives in that ad set. We're gonna run it for a couple days. Let's go to this particular ad set. And as you can see, we have here a couple creatives. Let's just put the maximum range. And as you can see, right here we have these three creatives, one of which that stands out with uh, five, almost like 5x return on ad spend. So now, because we know that this is a proven ad, first of all, I'm gonna start scaling this particular you know, ad set. I'm, I'm gonna increase the budget gradually while you know, I could take this particular creative and put it in the scaling campaign at the same time. And what we're doing is we are pretty much leveraging both horizontal and vertical scaling. We are scaling the budget, but we are also scaling the number of creatives that we run. And this is what, you know, one of your objectives should be as well. Now, the columns that I set up here, they are very accurately set up. Just, you know, for me, it works very well when I analyze every single ad and when I have to make any analysis or when I have to make some changes. So essentially the columns that you, you know, you could also use for your as well is going to look something like this. First of all, I want to look at the delivery. Like, is it in the learning phase? Is it, you know, active or any of that? Even though I see that you could have a, an ad set that is in learning limited, but still delivers, like you could see over here. After that, of course, we have a budget, we have amount spent, we have a very return on net spend. And however, I want to mention one thing both with a return on net spend. Because of the iOS 14 update, this might not be very, very accurate. This is why we cross analyze with other like third party software tools, such as Triple Well. Something that you know you could check it out under like in the link down below if you'd like to get some more accurate information as well. After that, we have a purchase, the number like how many conversions we've got from that. You know, if we go to this particular, let's say, ad set and we see that this one has gotten like 13 purchases, but it literally tells us that it's a proven ad, that we want to pay attention to that ad. You know, you want to look at our creative. We want to see why, like we have to ask ourselves a question, like why is this performing so well? and then duplicate and create some iterations based off of that creative. Then we have a cost per purchase. You know, we have some other metrics that tells us all about like the conversion rate on the website, you know, the, the discrepancy between let's say the checkouts and the purchases is also very important because sometimes you might have really great ads, but people could stop like at the checkout or at the actual card. If you see a huge discrepancy, then you want to go back to your business, to your website, and make sure that you solve and you fix all those problems. Otherwise, it doesn't matter how many creatives you're going to launch. If a problem is at the checkout page, then you are gonna have huge problems, you know, skyrocketing and scaling your ad account. Then we have an add to cart, you know, the cost per add to cart, you know, also want to look at how many like views we've got uh, for every single off of a product page. And then some other metrics that we don't really pay that much attention to, but just it's good to know for us is reach, impressions, and frequency. Now, if you don't know anything about this, essentially with reach is, you know, the number of accounts that you could get to. The impressions are the number of times people saw your ad. If, for example, I, you know, saw your ad once, that is considered one reach, but if I see the same ad two times, that will be considered as two impressions. And with frequency, this is gonna tell us like how many times a person saw on average an ad. Like with retargeting, you will see usually that, you know, this frequency column is higher, but at the end of the day, what matters is like the profits, you know, the return on spend that you're getting, because I have, you know, ads that have a frequency of even five, 10, but our return on spend is high and that is what matters for us. This is why we pretty much optimize based on what moves the needle, what brings us results. Now, other metrics we have here, cost per one post impression, you know, click through rate and cost per click. And one more important metrics that I would want you to pay attention to, actually two metrics, 
this uh, video hook, you know, and video retention. Now, if you have some videos and you see that they are working well and you have a great return on spend, you want to also look at your video hook because if something is working, you first did a very good job to grab their attention, and which is a really, really actually good accomplishment to consider because when you create other ads in the future, you could know what actually your audience you know, likes, what uh, could grab their attention so you could replicate and use for other video hooks as well. And the same thing applies with a video retention as well. And yeah, this is essentially how I analyze the Facebook ad performance for different Facebook ad accounts. If you enjoy this type of content, please let me know in the comments below and tell me what other types of videos you would like to see on my channel. So until next time, as usual, this was Archie and I am cheering you on.